district play opens up for the Grayson County Cougars as they take on the Whitesville Trinity Raiders here from Donley Field on a picturesque Monday afternoon. And a good good afternoon here and welcome to Grayson County High School for this evening's coverage of Grayson County Baseball against the Raiders of Whitesville Trinity, a rematch of last year's 12th District Championship. Sam Gormley here with you on the call. Appreciate you joining us here on our pregame show as we get you ready. I mean, we've had here, last time we were here, it was we were kind of in between temperatures where it was nice at the start of the game. By the end, it got a little bit chilly. We've had some games that uh, we've been throwing on the layers. I mean, just last week at softball, I know we were at like 38 degrees via the wind chill. But today, I mean, I'm not sure that you could ask for much better weather. The breeze is blowing. Temperature's around 80 degrees. It's absolutely perfect for some softball. Coming up on our pregame show, we're going to introduce you to both the Raiders of Whitesville Trinity, the Cougars of Grayson County, and give you the starting lineups and a whole lot more. That comes up and more right here on K105. Discover the heart of Litchfield at Hometown Hangout, your go-to spot for family, friends, and fun. It's more than just a place, it's an experience. Enjoy mouth-watering bites and exciting games in an atmosphere that buzzes with local charm. At Hometown Hangout, we're not just serving up food, we're dishing out memories. Join the community's newest hotspot and make every visit a story to share. Find us on West White Oak Street in Litchfield. Connect with us on Facebook for all the latest. How do you define success? Is it in the mastery of skills, in teamwork, in responsibility and self-discipline? Is it found through communication or through problem solving, innovation? Is it in the inches of small victories that lead down miles of self-discovery to a destination where potential and purpose meet? Prepared and confident, Grayson County Schools. Success is what you make it. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Welcome back to Donley Field, Grayson County and Whitesville Trinity here in the first district matchup of the year for, for Grayson County. But you look at Whitesville Trinity, they've already played two. They're 0-2. They dropped a pair of games to Edmondson County to open up their district play. Both of those were run-rule defeats. But I'll tell you what, this Whitesville Trinity team, they always seem to find their way in the district championship, and they did it again here at Donley Field a year ago, pulling off at least a somewhat minor upset. It was two pretty evenly matched teams against Edmondson County last year. Picked up a win against them and then went on to lose to Grayson County in the district championship in a game that was played just about a year ago. Uh, was that for Grayson County um, and Whitesville Trinity in that 12th district championship matchup. Raiders this year entered the record of 2-9. and nine. As we mentioned, 0-2 in 12th district play. But they're coming in off of a win. And when your team is struggling, if you're 1-9, just getting that win is sometimes all you really need. So they picked up a 12-2 win against Warren Central last Wednesday. That's the last time that they took the diamond. Of course, these two teams will match up again tomorrow in Whitesville for the second of this two-game set. Up on the other side, Grayson County, 8-7 record. Their first district matchup here of the year. Cougars, though, enter on a little bit reeling as well. They have lost five of their last six matchups. The lone win came a week ago today as they defeated John Harden. Pretty much since the month has flipped from March to April, this Grayson County team has really struggled. 
and it's been pitching. That has been one of the things that'll be something we talk about throughout the broadcast that the Cougars have struggled at it much, uh, it, it, a lot of it. If you take out that one win and those six games of the five losses, they're giving up over 10 runs a game, and you're just not going to win many games if you give up that many runs because you're putting too much of an emphasis on your offense that is done decent. But you're, you're getting now into the nitty-gritty portion of your schedule where you got to start winning. And these are the games that matter more than anything. You know, Grace County's played 15 games. Those 15 really, in all seriousness, don't mean a whole lot unless you get into ties in district play. In that case, then RPI comes into impact. But right now, it doesn't really matter. This one tonight, though, matters. Tomorrow night in Whitesville, it matters. A week from today, we're back here at Don Lee Field against Edmondson County. That game matters, and the game in Brownsville the next day. Those are games that matter towards district standings. Whereas for right now, you know, Whitesville Trinity, they're trying to get back into the winning column, and Grayson County's trying to make sure that they can compete and win their second straight 12th district championship that will be held this year at uh, at Whitesville Trinity in the Region tournament this year will be held at Breckenridge County up in Harned. Both of these teams will try to get back to the region and build upon what they did a year ago. A couple of the players you'll need to know for Whitesville Trinity, it's a very young team. They lost a lot, a lot from last year. In fact, on the mound, really the only player that has any true experience coming back is Hayden All. He's the only player that got a start on the mound. He's not starting today for the Raiders Instead, they're going to turn towards Carson Fitzgerald. The junior will start. They haven't put any stats on KHSA, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know what we could be looking for for the junior to get up there against this Grayson County team. His opposition today for Grayson County will be their ace, Gage Napier. Gage will be making his seventh appearance in his fourth start. He's 1-1 one one with an ERA just above three on the season. Grayson County with that 8 and 7 record, Whitesville Trinity with a record of 2 and 9. We'll take a break. Starting lineups are next here on K105. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors in communities around the world. When disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join us. Join your neighbors. Join United Way. Owensboro Health offers excellent care for your entire family. Close to home in Grayson County with locations in Litchfield, Big Clifty, and Caneyvale. Our primary care providers are experts in managing high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic conditions, so you can stay healthy and feel your best. Make an appointment today with one of our primary care providers at owensborohealth.org slash primary care. Smith Overhead Door isn't just about opening and closing. We're about safety, security, and style for your home or business. As a future designs company, we're lifting expectations across Grayson and surrounding counties with top brands like CHI and Chamberlain. Hey there, I'm Kevin Brooks with Smith Overhead Door. Whether it's a sturdy lift master for your garage or a sleek clope door for your shop, we install and service with a commitment to reliability. Smith Overhead Door, we're opening up possibilities. Secure your entrance at SOHD.info. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School. Whitesville Trinity against Grayson County here in the first district matchup of the season for the Cougs. Let's meet the starting lineups for both these teams. First, for the visitors on the scoreboard, the Raiders of Whitesville Trinity, who enter with a record of 2-9, and nine, coached by Ethan Maxey. Leading off in left field will be Grant Howard. The two-hole hitter will be the shortstop, Cale Borman. Batting third in center field, Hayden All. The cleanup hitter will be the catcher, Connor Hatfield. Batting fifth at first base, Brady McBrayer. 
The six-hole hitter will be the third baseman, Kayan Howard. Batting seventh, at second, Nate Blue. The eight-hole hitter will be the starting pitcher, Carson Fitzgerald. And batting ninth, the designated hitter, Harrison Barnett. He will be in place of Kenton Abbott, who will be playing right field tonight for the Raiders. Once more, that lineup, Howard in left, four minutes short. All in center, Hatfield behind the dish. McBrayer at first, Howard at third. And the latter third of Blue at second, Fitzgerald on the mound, and Barnett as the designated hitter. And now the starting lineup for the Grayson County Cougars, who enter with a record of 8-7, and 0-0 and in 12th district play. They are losers, though, of five of their last six, including their last time out. A tough one on the road at Breckenridge County, a game that was supposed to be played here last Friday. But as you know, if you stepped outside last week, there was quite a bit of rain. Breckenridge County has turf field. So he said, hey, you're coming to us in May. Let's just flip those. So we'll come to you now, and you'll come to us in May. And that works out great because both teams really wanted to play a game, and Grayson County fell in that one. Uh, the lineup for the Kooks, leading off the center fielder, is Jaron Van Meter. Batting second, the starting catcher, Landon Haycraft. The three-hole hitter will be the first baseman, Landon Shirella. Batting fourth at third base, Levi Rogers. The five-hole hitter will be the starting pitcher, Gage Napier. Batting sixth in left field, Garrett Bradley. The seven-hole will be the shortstop, Chase Bonnock. Batting eighth, the designated hitter is Jake Brancher. Batting ninth in right field is Cam Fulkerson. The designated player at second base is Jared Roney. Once more, that lineup for Grayson County. Van Meter in center, Haycraft as catcher. Shirell at first, Rogers at third. Napier is a starting pitcher. Bradley in left field, Bonnock at short, Bradshaw the designated hitter, and Fulkerson. In right field with Roney not batting, he will be playing second base for Grayson County. Cougs are coached by Jody Nutt. Grayson County has owned this series as of late between these two teams. They've won 15 straight, but... Last couple times these two teams have played, been close matchups. Last four, five-run game, three-run game, one-run game, one-run game. So when these two, you know, you can never count out the Raiders. As we talk about this in any sport. It doesn't matter what sport they're playing. They're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a team that plays harder than them. They're going to play hard. They're never going to give up, and that is a really important thing. It's something that, you know, you, you can't coach. You know, they might not always have the most talent on the field. They sometimes do. I mean, last year's team was loaded with seniors. You know, players like Huff and Hernandez and so on. But right now, this is a younger team trying to get more experience. And they're probably thinking one thing. This Cougar team, they're struggling right now. They've lost five of six. Probably thinking, let's jump out early and see what we can't do. The play-by-play -play of Grayson County and Whitesville Trinity comes up next on K105. Snap Chiropractic in Litchfield puts you in charge of your health. Our board-certified chiropractors believe life's good when you feel good. That's why we're dedicated to pain relief and prevention. We offer top-notch care tailored to your needs, ensuring you live your life to the fullest. At Snap Chiropractic, we make feeling good a snap. Join our community of wellness today. Your health, your way. Discover more at snapchiropractors.com. Hi, I'm Peyton Manning, and I'm partnering with the American Red Cross this year to tackle blood shortages. Giving blood's important because every two seconds, someone actually needs blood, and unfortunately, only like 3% of the U.S. population donates. So we have to step up to give and to make sure there's plenty of blood available for those in need. Visit redcrossblood.org to get in the game and make an appointment to give. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction, and the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're going to help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources. 
movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where it's about time for us to roll here in this 12th district matchup between the Raiders of Whitesville Trinity and the Cougs of Grayson County. Gage Napier on the bump to start for Grayson County. Napier, this will be his seventh game, his fourth start. Record of 1-1, one 3.15 one, ERA, 16 strikeouts, 8 walks on the year for the sophomore ace for this Grayson County team that is getting more and more experience by the day. He'll be facing this Whitesville Trinity order, and he'll face Grant Howard to lead off. Grant Howard, the freshman, stepping into the box. He is playing left field here today against this Raider team. Andy Thomason calling the balls and strikes behind the dish. An absolutely perfect afternoon for baseball, and the first pitch coming from Gage Napier is low for ball number one, and that's how we get rolling. Official game time temperature 82 degrees, 607 local time, starting just a little bit behind here today. 1 0 coming from the sophomore Napier is a swing and a miss at a pitch high. This Napier is one of his first starts here against a big team uh, in a big game like this this season against Whitesville Trinity. Here in this district game, he came in against Breckenridge County on Friday just to get some work because he hadn't pitched in a while. He had a game he probably wanted to forget as well over spring break. Pitch missed high, the 2-1 coming. He's high and inside. He's struggling to locate early. You notice that a little bit in warm-ups as well. You can tell he just takes an extra second to collect himself on the mount. Landon Haycraft is his battery behind the dish, 3-1. Cold strike on the inside corner, and the count will go full. The defensive lineup for Grayson County, Rogers at third, Bonnock at short, Roney at second, Shirell at first, Bradley Van Meter Fulkerson from left to right in the outfield. The 3-2 from Napier, high and inside, and a leadoff walk is how we get started here today at Don Lee Field. Cale Borman comes in the shortstop. Borman came in and really played extremely well for the Whitesville Trinity baseball team, or oh, sorry, basketball team, as he's not the tallest kid on the on the field here today. And it's kind of funny that I, I'd be you'd probably be hard pressed to find a shortstop duo between Chase Bonnock as he lays a bunt down. It's right in front of the plate, charging in and getting it as Rogers. He'll throw on to first to get the first out as Rogers took it right away from his pitcher Gage Napier. Charging hard, but it's a sacrifice bunt going 5-3 on the putout. That'll be the center fielder, Hayden Ull, now to come in. He's one of the lone Raiders that has really any semblance of experience. Returning. Outside, the first pitch misses. This Raider team enters this game after a 12-2 win against Warren Central on Wednesday. The only other team that they've defeated is Union County. Napier pickoff move in there ahead of the tag, and timeout was called before the pickoff move set our home plate umpire Andy Thomason. So it doesn't matter. He was, he was safe anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. The time was called by the batter all. Napier a long look down. Delivers the pitch. It's a swing and a miss. Howard, that runner down at second base. If you're the Raiders in a lot of ways, they're playing with nothing to lose right now. They're the underdogs in today's game. You're on the road. How aggressive do you go on the base pass? Strong secondary lead, but the pitch is fouled off to the right side out of play, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes to the junior Hayden All. This Raider team, no seniors on there, so they'll all be back next year. 
The one two with one down here in the first. Slow grounder right back up the middle. Bonnock at shortstop gets it, throws across the diamond. That's out number two here in this top half of the first inning. Advancing, though, on the play is Howard to third base. Cleanup hitter Connor Hatfield comes in. Trying to give the Raiders an early one to nothing advantage. First pitch misses outside from Napier. This Grayson County team, they've lost five of six, and during that stretch, they have a team ERA of 9.28, and that includes having a shutout win against John Harden during that stretch. If you take that game out, there's a swing and a miss and a pitch low. If you take that game out, their ERA is over 10, and if you want to know, you want to circle a reason as to why you're on a little bit of a skid right now, it's, it's no secret that if you're giving up over 10 runs a game, that that's going to do it. But then when you combine that with, there's a swing and a miss and a pitch high and outside. Napier's ahead in the count here, one ball and two strike. The whip, which if you're an analytic fan, that's walks and hits per inning pitched. Cougars' whip during this stretch is 2.65. That means that almost three base runners per inning are going up against Grayson County during this. You're not going to win many games if you do that. Like right now, Gage Napier's whip is technically it's a little over one because he has one base runner on through two outs. you got to start bringing that down. The break even coming here in the first inning. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes, and that is the threat. Whitesfield Trinity puts a man on third but can't cross him through. We're headed to the bottom half of the first inning. It's the Raiders' one, and the Cougs are coming up. It's Cougar Baseball on K105. Discover the heart of Litchfield at Hometown Hangout, your go-to spot for family, friends, and fun. It's more than just a place, it's an experience. Enjoy mouth-watering bites and exciting games in an atmosphere that buzzes with local charm. At Hometown Hangout, we're not just serving up food, we're dishing out memories. Join the community's newest hotspot and make every visit a story to share. Find us on West White Oak Street in Litchfield. Connect with us on Facebook for all the latest. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Smith Overhead Door isn't just about opening and closing. We're about safety, security, and style for your home or business. As a future designs company, we're lifting expectations across Grayson and surrounding counties with top brands like CHI and Chamberlain. Hey there, I'm Kevin Brooks with Smith Overhead Door. Whether it's a sturdy lift master for your garage or a sleek clopay door for your shop, we install and service with a commitment to reliability. Smith Overhead Door, we're opening up possibilities. Secure your entrance at SOHD. Info. Carson Fitzgerald will start for Whitesville Trinity here on, on this season. The junior will get the mound going up against this Grayson County lineup. And leading off for Grayson County in this game is going to be Jaron Van Meter. Whitesville Trinity put a runner on third base in that top half of the first inning, but could not get him across. See how Grayson can get going up against this junior starting pitcher of Carson Fitzgerald. Van Meter steps into the box. And the first pitch coming from Fitzgerald is a check swing. And they're going to say it's a cold strike on the inside corner. That would be what we would classify as a sword from Jaron Van Meter as it came inside. And it was a defensive swing. And he absolutely did go through on it. And I don't know if Andy Thomason called it a strike regardless, but it is a swinging strike from Van Meter. Pitch misses outside. We move to one ball and one strike. Van Meter, slower start to this year. Hitting only 250 with seven RBIs and a double. Jody Nutt made the move to put him back in that leadoff spot, moving him up from the second to the one hole. you got to imagine that's just trying to spark a guy who has hit above 400 a lot of his career. And for Jaron, a lot of what he needs to do is put the ball on the ground. Is he has got good speed 
and test a team like Whitesville Trinity that might not be the greatest on the infield. 2-1 coming. Misses outside, and Van Meter fights back to go three balls and one strike against Fitzgerald. Coming with a 3-1 to Van Meter. And it's a cold strike just nabbing the inside corner. Van Meter didn't necessarily agree with the call, but he steps out of the box, takes a couple of swings, and settles right back in. Here comes the full count from Fitzgerald. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. It's fouled off behind the dish, and we are going to do it again. No score here early on in this first district game of the year. Grayson County, it is so big to open up district play with a 1-0 record. Three two coming one more time. Van Meter saws it off to right field, charging in is Abbott, and he'll slide and he will make the catch. Nice play out in right field made by Abbott for out number one here in this bottom of the first inning. Abbott was playing shallow anyways. If he was playing in normal right field, there's no way that he would have caught up to that ball. Wayne Haycraft, the catcher. Comes in, 378 average with four runs batted in, but Landon has done a really good job at the top of this order, getting on base, finding any potential way to do that. There's a called strike on the outside corner. When you look at Haycraft, his on-base percentage is nearly 600 this year, which is elite. It doesn't matter what level you're at. That's an elite statistic. 0-1 inside and misses. One thing with Haycraft, though, no extra base hits this year. Now, does that mean a lot? I mean, if you're hitting 378 with an on-base percentage nearly 600, the extra base hits doesn't necessarily matter as much, but really as a team that has been a weakness of this Grayson County team as the pitch misses high, it's two balls and one strike here with one down in the inning. They don't have a lot of extra base hits. They're hitting a lot of singles, and at some point you're going to have to start turning those into doubles and getting gappers. 2-1. Outside it misses, and it's 3-1. Second straight batter that has gone to this point after a first pitch strike. Long look in for Fitzgerald against Haycraft. Pitch outside. Haycraft works a walk. I think Haycraft thought that might have been a strike on the outside, and he kind of did a stutter. And realized, oh wait, that was ball four. So he says, I'll just take first base myself. First inning of today's game is brought to you by Smith Overhead Door. It's a new partner of Future Designs Building Materials. Visit SOHD.info for more information on how they can help transform your home. Landon Shirella into the box for his first plate appearance, and he grounds one of the second baseman blue. He'll flip on, and at second out by half a step is Haycraft. Shirella easily legs it out. There was no relay throw. Fielder's choice goes 4-6. There's two down here in the bottom of the first inning. Rogers, the third baseman, now up to hit 432 average, 13 runs batted in, three doubles as well as Ethan Maxey's coming out to talk right now with our field umpire. Not entirely sure what this is about. And now we're going to have a conversation. Are they trying to call, say that Haycraft on the slide had some semblance of interference? And I, I, I don't know how you can argue that because there's, there's no shot. I don't think an MLB, with how slow that ball hit, an MLB infield's not turning a double play on that. And whatever the conversation was, uh, it has broken up. So it's Shirella replaces Haycraft on the base pass at first base. Rogers, the lefty, into the box. Been one of the better bats this year for Grayson County. Hits it opposite field into left field. That one's going to drop for a base hit. First and second now, a little two-out rally coming for the orange and blue of Grayson County. It'll be the pitcher, Gage Napier, that'll try and help himself out. 
Napier hitting 250 with five runs spatted in as a pair of doubles. This Grayson County team, and I'm sure he'd love nothing more than to put one in the gap and try and get a nice little double here to help himself out on the mound. Fitzgerald delivers the pitch. It's way outside for ball number one. Called strike inside, moving us to one ball and one strike. No score here at the bottom of the first inning from Don Lee Field. Sam Gormley here with you on the call. Appreciate you taking the time to join us. Just an absolutely gorgeous evening here for baseball. 1-1 one, one comes. Well outside, nice stop by the catcher How or Hatfield behind the dish. Those are those dangerous pitches that you really got to trust a catcher you don't want those two runners to move into scoring position because then you're looking at an easy base hit to play two. Outside going again, and it's, it's too far outside. It moves to three balls and one strike here with two down in the bottom half of this first inning. Whitesville Trinity's tried to get that outside corner. Andy Thomas and the home plate umpire called it a couple of times. Just a little bit too far on the outer edge of the of the box. Opposite field hit to right field. It's hit deep, and it's over the head of the right fielder, Abbott. All the way to the wall. Shirella easily scores. Rogers is digging for home. Napier's digging for third. The play at third is well off the line. A triple for Gage Napier. Puts Grayson County on top 2-0. to zero. Exactly. What the doctor ordered for the orange and blue, they're on top 2-0 from Gage Napier. Into the box is Garrett Bradley. First pitch is inside for ball number one. Bradley, a 242 average with seven runs batted in. And until about 30 seconds ago, he had had the only triple of the year for Grayson County. Falls outside now to two balls and no strikes. Good start for this Grayson County team. It's exactly what you needed to do when you're, you're struggling, you're playing a team that you're favored to beat. You want to get out to an early lead, especially when you're at home. 2-0, almost hits Bradley. He lets it go by, and it's 3-0. Be interesting to see here with a runner on third. Is Jody not giving the green light? Well, he's not necessarily a believer of it. And a 3-0 comes, and it's well high, and a four-pitch walk to Bradley. Puts runners on the corners for Chase Bonnock. Bonnock on the year, 286 average with 12 RBIs. He's also got a good bunt. Leads the team with five sacrifices. I don't know that necessarily you're going to be seeing that in this, but third base is playing back. Maybe you do like a little safety squeeze here, even though, I mean, Bonnock's got plus speed. Pitch bounces in the dirt. And I'd be surprised, too, if you don't see them start that runner at first base, Bradley. Grace County leads 2-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. Two down for Bonnock. Off and running. Opposite field. It's down, and it's in the corner. Napier easily scores. The right fielder Abbott hurries over to get it to hold Bradley to only, or hold Bonnock to only a single. Bradley advances to third, and Grayson County leads 3-0. to zero. Cougars are using the opposite field early on in this game. Jake Bratcher now into the box to hit 286 average. Eight runs batted in. And a pair of doubles. Bonnock off and running. The throw down to second is cut off by the shortstop, Borman. And because of that, Bonnock will get credit for the stolen base. Runners now on second and third. Two down, bottom of first. Grayson County leads 3-0. to zero. Bratcher grounds one. Backhanded by the first baseman. No, it's off his glove into right field. One run will score. Bonnock is digging from home. He'll easily get there, and Grayson County leads 5-0 to zero on the infield hits by Jake Bratcher. 
It's one of those that you might see called as an error. But I think that was a tough backhand because Bradshaw absolutely smoked it. 5-0, bottom of the first inning. And that pitch is well outside, thrown to the backstop. And easily scurrying up to second base is Jake Bratcher on a wild pitch. And that'll be about as easy as a wild pitch that Grayson County is going to get to advance a runner. Cameron Fulkerson is the hitter for Grayson County. He's the ninth man to bat in the inning. Pitch right back up the middle, off the glove of Fitzgerald. He recovers and throws on to first, and that is the inning. But Grayson County does get five runs, and we head to the second. It's Grayson County 5, Whitesville Trinity 0. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Owensboro Health offers excellent care for your entire family. Close to home in Grayson County with locations in Litchfield, Big Clifty, and Caneyvale. Our primary care providers are experts in managing high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic conditions, so you can stay healthy and feel your best. Make an appointment today with one of our primary care providers at owensborohealth.org slash primary care. Good start for the Orange and Blue. They're on top 5-0 to zero as we head to the top half of the second inning. Gage Napier helped himself in that inning as well with a two-run triple to help pace this Grayson County team. Whitesville Trinity going to need the bats to get going. They'll turn towards the first baseman, Brady McBrayer, the junior. Steps into the box, gets the pitch from Napier, and it is just fouled off. He just got that one off the knob of his bat. Napier in that first inning walked the first batter he faced. They ended up retiring the next three. Misses low and outside. This Grayson County team, during that stretch we've talked about that they have not been playing their best baseball. We mentioned that the runs have been there. The earned run average, you know, and the losses of those five of six is over ten. Defense has not helped out either. They're averaging just about two errors per game. And those are the things that will make Jody Nutt... If he had much hair, he would be ripping it out because sometimes errors happen. There's a high chopper to the third baseman, Rogers. On the low bounce, he takes it and throws on. And that's the first out of the inning. It's a nice play by Rogers. Is that was a high chopper at first, but it hit off the lip of where the infield meets the dirt. And it took kind of a weird bounce. And that's usually where the, th the third baseman sometimes will struggle and make a quote-unquote error just because of the weird bounce. But back to that point of, you know, errors happen. They're inevitable sometimes. But it's some it, but at the same time, sometimes it's just you're not your head's not in the game, you're not completely focused, you're making some semblance of a mistake there. You gotta make it a little bit better. Can Howard is the batter now for the Raiders. First pitch from Napier was low for ball one. The second one's fouled behind the dish. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. I appreciate that we do have our peanut gallery watching today, too, via the K105 Facebook page. Swing and a miss, down on strikes goes Howard. Napier gets the K there. See, former K105 crew member and color analyst Briley Napier, is he's locked in and watching, former K105 color analyst as well. Chase Blaine in there, and... Even former Cougar baseball assistant coach Buddy Hoppy is locked in and watching today. Appreciate them for doing it. And Barley says I shouldn't be calling out Jody's hair. There's a called strike, the first pitch to Nate Blue. I was just saying, he doesn't have much. It's buzz cut, you know? It's, it happens to the best of us. The 0-1 is a swing and a miss to Blue. And 
Napier right now in this inning is pounding the zone. And, you know, sometimes you see this with, with pitchers is sometimes you almost try to get too cute in trying to, you know, make pitches. Sometimes just throwing strikes is all you really need to do. The 0-2. Called strike three. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. It takes Gage Napier only 11 pitches to get through the second inning. We head to the bottom of two. It's 5-0 Grayson. It's Cougar Baseball on K105. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters, if having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Welcome back to Don Lee Field. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Grayson County leads 5-0 against Whitesville Trinity. We'll be back to the top of the order for the orange and blue. It'll be Jaron Van Meter lined out to the right fielder Abbott in his first plate appearance. Score update to bring you as well. Baseball score at the end of the second inning. Edmondson County leads Butler County 2-1. Big district game happening as the entirety of the district is in action this evening. First pitch coming from Carson Fitzgerald here in the bottom of the second to Van Meter. He's low for ball number one. Fitzgerald threw 29 pitches in that first inning of play. Cougars were hitting him well at four hits in the inning. Fitzgerald compiled that with a pair of walks as well. And now he's going to compile that with a hit by pitch. As he hits Jaron Van Meter on the thigh. Jaron turns, kind of rolls his eyes, and said, you know, I was kind of hoping I could hit the ball. But instead, it's a free pass down to first base. Works just the same. Lane and Haycraft, that's how he reached in his first at bat. By the walk, he'll come back into the box here against Fitzgerald. When you start an inning like that, it is an adjustment for a pitcher. When you throw a hit by pitch, you just got to take a deep breath and recollect yourself on the mound. Off and running is Van Meter. He's got the bag stolen easily on the first pitch there from Carson Fitzgerald. Off and running and had the bag stolen with ease. Didn't even need to slide down at second. As it is an 0-1 count here. Pitch is a high chopper right side. Blue's got a long run. He gets it, throws on to first, and it's a wild throw. Advancing and coming in to score is Van Meter. Backside going to second is Haycraft, and Grayson County leads 6-0. to zero. That was a really tough play for the second baseman, Blue. He had to go a long way to try and make a play on it and did not was not able to. Landon Shirella comes into the box now. Pitch misses low to Shirella. Shirella in his first plate appearance saw one pitch and grounded into a fielder's choice to the second baseman, Blue. Shirella hitting 465 with 19 runs batted in, four doubles, an OPS of 1.11, which is elite. It's a great OPS and another stat that really stands out a lot when you look at Landon Shirella, and it fits the scenario we're in right now with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 500. He finds a way to get them in. So there's a cold strike to move the count to two balls and one strike. Grayson County leads 6-0. to zero. Shirella finds a way to put them in. 
The 2-1 coming. Opposite field. And out of play. It's interesting saying that with Shirella. Opposite field's not necessarily where he wants to go when he pulls the ball this year. He's hitting 900. Now listen, I might not be an expert at the game of baseball. As he goes right back up the middle, bobbled by the shortstop Borman. He recovers, he throws, and Shirella is out on the play. We'll come back to that 900 stat later on in the broadcast, but nice recovery by Borman as that ball was smashed up the middle. He bobbled, recovered, Haycraft does scurry down to third. Levi Rogers, one for one, singled into left in his first plate appearance. In the first pitch he sees is low, bounces away from the catcher, Hatfield. Haycraft will stay put at third. Just didn't get quite far enough, and it's smart base running uh, uh, decision there by Haycraft. You see too often where batters will think and then go. You can't think. If you think, you're probably going to be out. you got to go right at your first opportunity, and Haycraft didn't, so smartly just went back, especially when Levi Rogers flies one deep left field, and it's going to drop in left field. Howard couldn't play it. Easily scoring his Haycraft. Rogers will go into second with a double, and Grayson County leads 7-0. to zero. Gage Napier comes back in, one for one. He tripled off the right field wall in his first plate appearance. RBIs number six and seven. And the first pitch he sees, he fouls off to the right side out of play. Score update to bring you. Lady Cougars softball, they trail Whitesville Trinity in the top of the fifth inning just on the other side of, other side of campus, 9-0. It's a big first inning for the Lady Raiders, and they've played even since that point. Napier rips one, left side, base hit. Two bounces into left field. Howard, the left fielder, picks it up. Rowering and coming in to score is Rogers. And a single for Gage Napier gives him his third RBI of the game as Rogers scores to make it 8-0. to zero. Jody Nutt didn't think twice about rounding Rogers to come in and score on that play. Garrett Bradley walked in his first plate appearance. In fact, he only saw four pitches, all of them out of the zone. 8-0 Grayson here in the bottom of the second. Breaking ball in there for a called strike. This Whitesville Trinity team is, is very young. They lost a lot from last year, including a couple of guys who are really, really good athletes. You know, Landon Huff is now at Brescia, I believe. Nathan Hernandez is playing down at Ave Maria University. Pitch goes in the dirt. Napier is off, and he's got second base. On the wild pitch. That was one of those scenarios where Napier saw that ball hit the dirt, and he was off. He didn't think, and if he'd have thought, he'd have been dead because it was a good recovery by Hatfield, the catcher. 1-1 one, one coming here in the bottom of the second inning. Pitch off the glove of the catcher, Hatfield. Napier will scurry down now to third base and go 90 feet away. And just hit off the glove of a pitch high. Here at Bradley, he's seen now seven pitches in this game. Six of them have been out of the zone. 2-1. Opposite field hit, left field. Foul. Just foul. Rolling down towards the tarp down that left field line. and Looks like a Whitesville Trinity coach is going to have to drop down to go run and grab that. And It's one of those scenarios where you're a little bit surprised that he doesn't have a freshman or an eighth grader or something down there that his job is to go run and get those balls because, well, actually we're going to play with him in, in foul territory down there. The break even is behind Bradley. It doesn't hit him. It looked like it was destined to, but I guess Bradley leaned towards the plate. Not missing it. Three balls, two strikes, one down, bottom of the second, 8-0 Grayson. Swing and a miss, but it bounces away from the catcher. Napier will score, and there's not going to be a play down at first. So it'll be a drop third strike, swinging. 
but safe on the wild pitch. Makes it 9-0 Grayson County. It'll be Bonnock to step in. He singled into right field in his first plate appearance. That's exactly what Grayson County needed. They've gotten off to a good start in this game. First pitch, called strike. Fitzgerald is down. His next pitch will be his 50th of the game. There is somebody warming up in the Whitesfield Trinity bullpen, though. There's a ground ball right back to Fitzgerald. He bobbles, he recovers, and he throws out Bonnock for out number two. The runner, Bradley, was off and running on the play, so he will easily have second on that. We'll try to see if we can't bring you that number who is warming up on in, in the bullpen down that third base line. as the second inning of today's game is brought to you by our friends Midway Pharmacy and Clarkson, Litchfield, and Caneyville. They're a proud sponsor of Cougar Athletics. Remember, Midway Pharmacy delivers free across Grayson County. No one coming to Jake Bratcher, who's one for one in the game. Singled on a hard ground ball that went off the glove of McBrayer. We've got a bumblebee that has been flying around the windows to our press box, and he's not found his way in yet, and I hope he, he, he continues just to go back and forth because we don't necessarily want him. He's not invited into the press box. It, it's not necessarily big enough for the people we have in there in here today, let alone him. Pitch misses low when it goes to one ball and two strikes here in the bottom of the second inning. Bradley stands down at second. Pitch outside. The 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Off and running is the runner. It's a swing and a miss. Bratcher is out, and that is the inning. Grayson County scores four runs on two hits and an error. We head to the third. It's 9-0 Grayson. It's Cougar Baseball on K105. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Hi, I'm Peyton Manning, and I'm partnering with the American Red Cross this year to tackle blood shortages. Giving blood's important because every two seconds, someone actually needs blood, and unfortunately, only like 3% of the U.S. population donates. So we have to step up to give and to make sure there's plenty of blood available for those in need. Visit redcrossblood.org to get in the game and make an appointment to give. Gage Napier back out for the third inning of work. Grayson County on top, 9-0 to zero. against Whitesville Trinity. It'll be 8-9-1 in the order. Carson Fitzgerald, the pitcher, will lead off. Napier so far in the game, two innings, a walk, and three strikeouts. He's pounded the zone, especially in that second inning. Sixteen pitches thrown in that first inning. Eleven. Carson Fitzgerald is in the leadoff here in this third inning against Gage Napier. First pitch thrown from Napier is a cold strike on that outside corner. This Raiders team just trying to find some semblance of offense. They had a leadoff runner on base, but last six have been retired via Napier. 
It's fouled off the mask of Landon Haycraft. Andy Thomason looks at him, says, you good? And Landon says, yep, I am. Landon Haycraft's a tough kid. and you, you cannot be a catcher and not be tough. He epitomizes that. The 0-2 is fouled off behind the dish. O2 coming to Fitzgerald. Just misses on the outside corner. Huh? <laughs> I mean, it just missed too. It was one of those where Lane Haycraft behind the dish. He held it for an extra second. 1-2. He goes right back there again, and Andy Thomason says, yeah, this time it's a strike. Down on strikes. Goes Fitzgerald, and it'll be the designated hitter, Harrison Barnett. To hit now for the Raiders, the nine-hole hitter. First pitch low and outside. Napier's trying to hit that low outside corner. And he's really just going fastball right now. He's not gone much off speed. I don't know if it's not landing for him or if he's just trying to blow it right past the Raiders. It's a swing and a miss. Moves us to one and one. Kooks up 9-0. The 1-1, one, one. swing and a miss, fools him again. And right now Barnett cannot catch up to Gage Napier's fastball. And Gage Napier knows that. And I'd imagine he probably goes high and outside here. That's exactly what he does, and down on strikes. Goes Barnett. We head back to the top of the order. It's four straight, sent down by the strikeout now for Gage Napier. Er Yes, four straight sent down by the strikeout. Grant Howard, he's been the lone batter to reach base. Against Napier, he worked a walk to open up the game. First pitch he sees low and outside for ball one. I mean, Napier is just pounding the zone right now with fastballs. one -oh, called strike. And that was one of those there where Howard, he bailed out of the box. And when you do that, some umpires will move that box with you. And that was kind of the example of that. High chopper to the shortstop, Bonnock. He takes, he throws, and that's out. Number three here in the third inning of play. We head to the bottom of three. It's 9-0. Cougs on top. This is Cougar Baseball. K105. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day. A movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Discover the heart of Litchfield at Hometown Hangout, your go-to spot for family, friends, and fun. It's more than just a place, it's an experience. Enjoy mouth-watering bites and exciting games in an atmosphere that buzzes with local charm. At Hometown Hangout, we're not just serving up food, we're dishing out memories. Join the community's newest hotspot and make every visit a story to share. Find us on West White Oak Street in Litchfield. Connect with us on Facebook for all the latest. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. New pitcher for Whitesville Trinity is going to be Harrison Barnett, the freshman, will come out. He's got a different windup, very slow on the windup. Takes him a long time to get it to the plate. And that's one of the things, too, for and he's not necessarily pumping with a lot of heat on his pitches. 
but sometimes the windup does everything you need to, especially when it's just ever so slightly different. Cameron Fulkerson, the right fielder, will get the first chance against the new starting pitcher. Fulkerson 0 for 1 here in the game. He grounded back to the starting pitcher in his first at bat. Sam Gormley here with you on the call. Grayson County leads 9 to 0 here in their first district game of the year. Looking to prove to 9 and 7 overall, but also 1 and 0 in 12th district play. And the first pitch coming to Fulkerson is high and inside. Just misses, almost hitting Fulkerson in the head. one -oh. Trying to get that breaking ball again, and it lands in the same spot. Fulkerson couldn't do much with it, and it's out of the zone. Two balls and no strikes. Barnett delivers the 2-0. Low bounces away from the catcher, and it's three balls and no strikes here for the Raiders. That's a four-pitch walk for Cam Fulkerson. Bounces away from the catcher. Fulkerson takes a hard turn. And you know what? I love that from Cameron Fulkerson. Is he doesn't have to stop at first on that. I, I mean, he theoretically, you know, if, if the catcher Hatfield wouldn't have gotten over as quick as he did, he could have turned and gone to second. Just smart baseball play that he was hustling all the way down the, down the, the field. Jaron Van Meter, he's 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in his last plate appearance. And pitch misses high and outside for bowl 1. Five straight out of the zone from Barnett to start. Van Meter also flew out to right field. Abbott again playing very shallow. They are in the outfield playing Van Meter ever so slightly to pull for the lefty. Outside, and it's, oh, it's a very generous called strike on the outside corner. Sometimes it's a pitcher. That's all you need to see. The 1-1. One, one. Just misses high. Might have been a little bit of a makeup call. I think that the second pitch, I don't believe was a strike. That one probably was. So it kind of evens us out here, 2-1. and one. Nobody out. It's 9 nothing. Van Meter saws one off, but it is foul down that first base line. These two teams match up again tomorrow. They're in Whitesville. If you're going to make the trip, remember that's not at the high school. That's at the Whitesville Community Park. If you're you're heading up 54, it's just there on the right. It's a really nice facility that they have. In fact, they're going to be hosting the district tournament this year, and next year they'll host the third region baseball tournament. High. And the count will go to three balls and two strikes. It was scheduled originally for them to host the baseball tournament this year, but now Breck has uh, jumped ahead of them, or I, I don't particularly know how, why, what? But Breck is now hosting the third region baseball tournament this season. The 3 2. Van Meter goes out to get it. It's a fly ball deep left center field. All the center fielder on his tracks. He's not going to get there. Picks it up on one bounce. And it'll be a stand up double for Jaron Van Meter. Fulkerson had to wait and see if it was caught, so he'll only get to third. And with nobody out here in the bottom half of the third inning, runners on second and third for Landon Haycraft. Haycraft 0 for 1. He's walked and reached on an error here today. That was that error that's almost was one of those that the official score very well could change to a hit because it was a really tough play for the second baseman, Blue. He had to go a long way to grab it. Ended up throwing it towards the Grayson County dugout, allowing a runner to score on the play. First pitch misses for ball one. Barnett is missing outside. He doesn't really want to pitch inside, except when he goes high and inside with that breaking ball. Goes low and outside now. Bounces just a few steps away from Hatfield behind the dish. He's able to grab it. And Fulkerson and Van Meter stay put at second and third. 9-0 Grayson, bottom half of the third inning. Missing high, and it's 3-0. 
Tell you what, if I'm Jody Nutt here, I'm more of an aggressive coach when it comes to this. I'm giving Landon the green light if he thinks he has one here. See what he can't do. 3-0. High, and the bases are juiced for Landon Shirella, who is 0 for 2 today. He's grounded out twice. And we have a timeout called, and we're going to have a mound visit right now with nowhere to put Grayson County's best bat of Landon Shirella. We touched on it in the open. Shirella hitting 465, 19 runs batted in, four doubles, and OPS over 1.1. Shear is hitting just below 500 with runners in scoring position. But the one stat that we were mentioning before he got out is when Shirella pulls the ball, which for him being a lefty to the right side of the field, he's hitting 900. Now, I might not be an expert at the game of baseball, but 90%, that's pretty darn good. Um, and... Uh, how much of that is fluke? How much of that is what? I, I don't know, but he's finding a way to put the ball in play when he pulls it. He fouls off the first pitch from Barnett. Trello is waiting. You know, after a mound visit, you know you're probably going to go fastball in the zone. He was ready for it. Just got enough of it to foul it off behind the dish. Fulkerson stands on third. Van Meter on second. Haycraft on first. 9-0 Grayson. Low. Slow ground ball to Blue at second. He'll relay to, to the shortstop, Borman. They'll tag and get Haycraft out. Coming in to score, though, is Fulkerson. It's 10-0 on the fielder's choice. You got runners on the corner for Levi Rogers. He's two for two today. He singled and doubled to left field in the game, goes along with his one run batted in. 10-0 Grayson in this third inning. Shirella is off and running, pitches in the dirt. They're going to throw off, and actually, it is going to go all the way to the bag as the shortstop Borman looked like he was going to cut it off, but instead Blue had to go back and do it as I think Borman overran it. So Shirella will get second base via the steal. And you got two in scoring position for Rodgers. Hitting 435 with runners in scoring position. That pitch is way high and outside. And Hatfield looked like a goalkeeper extending on it to reach out and just get enough of it with his left hand to keep it in front of him. That's a really athletic play. It just shows you how difficult the position of catcher is. 2-0. Fouls off. Two one to Rogers. Hard ground ball to the right side. Blue gets it, bobbles, recovers, and throws, and out. At first is Levi Rogers. Van Meter does score, and Grayson County leads eleven to zero against Whitesville. Trinity Shirella advances to third on the play. Age Napier, he's had himself an absolute day, both on the mound and pitching. And also hitting, ball goes to the backstop on the first pitch, and coming in to score is Shirella on the play. Napier, three RBIs in the game, and the only way he's going to get an RBI now is if he scores himself. But he's already tripled and singled. If he puts one over the fence, we could be looking at cycle watch for Gage Napier. It's 12-0, Grayson County. Cold strike on that outside corner. Outside goes the backstop. Two balls and one strike. Score update from the softball game on the other side of campus. It's 9-1, to one, Whitesville Trinity in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Outside, it goes to three balls and one strike. And it will be with the softball team on Thursday. As they host Butler County, Grace County High School. If you're not doing anything, baseball team, they play Thomas Nelson that same night. Come out and support these teams. 3-1, outside, goes to the backstop. Napier, he's hustling down. Is he going to turn and maybe dig for second? He will not. He took a hard turn, but we'll just stay put there. Garrett Bradley. Oh, for one, he walked and reached on a drop third strike. Jody Nuts talking with somebody right now. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it appears that uh, the decision has been made. I, I don't really know what that stoppage was about. Pitch misses high. It's 12-0 Grayson County here in this bottom of the third inning. If Grayson County would score three more runs in this inning, the game would be over. Cold strike to Bradley. Ingers have dominated this series. They're looking for what would be their 16th straight win against this Whitesville Trinity team that has been pesky to the other teams in the district. Bradley fouls it off. Fouled off behind the plate. Moved to one ball and two strikes. Harrison Barnett checks the runner Napier at first. Delivers the one, two. Bradley skies one right side. It's a mile high. The first baseman, McBrayer, backpedals on the outer edge of the infield, makes the catch. Grayson County, though, strikes for three more runs. We head to the fourth. It's 12 0 Cougs. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Owensboro Health offers excellent care for your entire family. Close to home in Grayson County with locations in Litchfield, Big Clifty, and Caneyvale. Our primary care providers are experts in managing high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic conditions, so you can stay healthy and feel your best. Make an appointment today with one of our primary care providers at owensborohealth.org slash primary care. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors in communities around the world. When disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United Way. Way. What a tool. He could hit a gas line. Wait. He's contacting 811. They'll mark the underground utilities free. Turns out he is smarter than he looks. Know what's below 811 before you dig. Mikhail Borman to lead off for Whitesfield Journey here in the top of the fourth inning. Grayson County on top 12 to 0. Gage Napier back out for another inning of work. Gage. From 39 pitches, three innings, a walk, five strikeouts, zeros. Other than that, Cale Borman sacrificed in his first plate appearance, and you better believe that they might throw down another bunt here. They do not. Instead, it's a high ground ball. Napier grabs it, and he's going to flip on to first. Nice play made by Gage Napier on the mount. Hayden Ohl, the center fielder, he grounded out to Bonock at shortstop. His first attempt in the box. And it misses low, first pitch there from Napier. Napier on those 41 pitches. 
He's been in the zone for the most part. 66% of his pitches have gone for a strike. Skied in the air. Shallow center field. Van Meter tripped, was able to recover, and he'll run it down for the second out here in this fourth inning of play. I mean, the biggest thing, too, with Napier is, you know, that first inning, he was only about 56% of his pitches for a strike. Since that point, he's gone 11 pitches, 12 pitches, and now to get two outs, he's gone only three pitches right now. He's being very efficient today. Swing and a miss to Connor Hatfield. Hatfield was a victim of a strikeout in his first plate appearance against Napier. Another fly ball in the infield. Third baseman Rodgers has it called, and he has it grabbed, and that is the inning. We head to the bottom of four. Cougars can end it with three. It's 12-0 Grayson County. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Snap Chiropractic in Litchfield puts you in charge of your health. Our board-certified chiropractors believe life's good when you feel good. That's why we're dedicated to pain relief and prevention. We offer top-notch care tailored to your needs, ensuring you live your life to the fullest. At Snap Chiropractic, we make feeling good a snap. Join our community of wellness today. Your health, your way. Discover more at snapchiropractors.com. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're gonna help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. Not again. You don't mess with underground power lines. Should have contacted 811. They'll mark those utility lines free. Yeah, but this guy ain't real bright. Neither is the neighborhood. <laughs> know what's below 811 before you dig. Bottom of the fourth inning. Be Chase Ballnock to lead off for Grayson County. Cougs on top 12 to 0. It's Barnett remaining into the game as the starting pitcher. Barnett struggled to find the strike zone in his inning of work. Of his 31 pitches, only 12 went for a strike. Bonnock one for two. Singled on a line drive to the right fielder. He's also grounded out. Again, as a reminder, we'll be over on the other side of campus on Thursday. Lady Cougar softball takes on... Butler County and the Cougar boys, they play Thomas Nelson. I believe that is a 5.30 first pitch on Thursday. I believe they're going back to the 5.30. Might be 5, though, because they're playing a team from the Eastern Time Zone. If I was good at my job, I would have that information for you. 1-0, and Bonnock's going to wear that one in the back. He'll trot down to first place, or first base, rather, via the free pass. It does appear that is a 5.30 Central time start. So for um, Thursday, if you want to come out and support the team. And looks like we're going to have a pitching change out on the mound. So what we'll do is we'll take a break and let you know who that is after this. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Smith Overhead Door isn't just about opening and closing. We're about safety, security, and style for your home or business. As a future designs company, we're lifting expectations across Grayson and surrounding counties with top brands like CHI and Chamberlain. Hey there, I'm Kevin Brooks with Smith Overhead Door. Whether it's a sturdy lift master for your garage or a sleek clope door for your shop, we install and service with a commitment to reliability. Smith Overhead Door, we're opening up possibilities. Secure your entrance at SOHD. Info.
doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. How do you define success? Is it in the mastery of skills, in teamwork, in responsibility and self-discipline? Is it found through communication or through problem solving, innovation? Is it in the inches of small victories that lead down miles of self-discovery to a destination where potential and purpose meet? Prepared and confident. The new pitcher is Kayan Howard for Whitesville Trinity. And the first pitch he throws is low for ball number one. And Bullnock stands at first base. Jake Bratcher is the hitter. Bratcher one for two. Singled in the first inning and lines one. Base hit left field. Puts two on here with nobody out in the fourth. Again, Grayson County now has the winning run coming to the plate. Cam Fulkerson. He's 0 for 1. He's grounded out and walked in his plate appearances today. Fulkerson could send the fans home happy, theoretically, and it's called strike on the inside corner from Howard. In the on-deck circle is the leadoff hitter, Jaron Van Meter for the Kooks. 0-1, swing and a miss. Howard's got a little bit more velocity than Barnett, who did move and is now at third base. Howard coming with the 0-2 to Fulkerson. Over his head. A small but mighty crowd here today at Don Lay Field. They're enjoying just a, uh, a great evening of baseball. I mean, temperature-wise, I'm sure if you asked Ethan Maxey and Jody Nutt, the head coaches, they'd probably, if you asked them, said, draw up your perfect day of baseball, it's probably pretty darn close to what they'd ask for. Some wisping clouds in the, in the sky and perfect weather. Fulkerson, hard ground ball to the shortstop Borman. He flips on to second for one. The relay is thrown away. Bounces hard off the backstop. Coming in and getting it ahead of the tag is Bonnock on the play. So Bonnock will score on the throwing error. Fielder's choice makes it 13-0. to zero. Van Meter now comes in. He doubled on a fly ball into deep left center field in his last plate appearance. Pitch goes through the legs of the catcher head field. It's low. Fulkerson easily takes second. Connor Hatfield's been busy behind the dish here tonight. The 1-0. Nearly hits Van Meter. Dives out of the box. And misses him just barely. The 2-0. A cold strike, apparently. Sometimes when the uh, pitcher's struggling to find the strike zone, the umpire will give him one or two. And uh, that would be an example of just that. The 2-1 outside, and we go to three balls and one strike. Here to Jaron Van Meter. He is the winning run right now. Fulkerson stands at second. 3-1 bitch to the senior Jaron Van Meter. 
And he fouls it down the right field line. You could hear some groans from that Cougar dugout because that's directed towards where the players park. And I'm sure probably Jaron parks. I know he, he drives a truck. I'm sure he probably wouldn't love it if he walked out there and realized that he's the one that put a big old dent in the side of his truck. But you you got you got to hit it pretty good to get it down to the players' lot. And most of the older players are smart enough to know to park as far away as possible. 3-2. Fouled off behind the dish. And that one's coming towards us right here in the press box. We were ready. Thank goodness for the net, because if not, our public address announcer, Brian Payton, might have needed to go see the dentist tomorrow morning. He might have knocked out his two front teeth. Three, two. Slow grounder to blue at second. He'll throw on to first and just get Van Meter by half a step. It'll be Landon Haycraft now to hit. First pitch swinging, hard ground ball to Barnett at third. He bobbles, recovers, and no chance to get Haycraft down the line. Fulkerson will score on the error by the third baseman, Barnett. It's 14-0 Grayson County. Haycraft is the winning run. Landon Chirella, who has been held very quiet today, he has three ground outs in the game. And it is a final score, too, from the other side of campus. Whitesfield Trinity defeats Grayson County in softball 9-1. to one. Pitch is in the dirt low. Haycraft was off and running anyway, so he will get credit for a steal on the play here with two down. He is the winning run now in scoring position. Landon Shirella can send the fans home happy. The 1-0. Fly ball left field. Long run for Howard. If it stays fair, it is not fair. If it would have been fair, that would have been the ball game. The 1-1 one, one. called strike. It'll move us to one ball and two strikes. Trello just not seeing the ball too clearly today against this Raider team. The 1 2 pitch. Fly ball, left field, out of play. Trello staying alive here. Andy Thomason, home plate umpire, he said, Hey, I need some new balls. And heck, I, I don't know if they opened up a new package. Those one looked pretty white down there. It's rare that you see them have to open up the new ones. 1-2 here in this fourth inning. Winning run stands at second for Grayson in the 14-0 game. It's a ground ball to the shortstop, Borman. Throwing on to first on the low bounce. It's picked by McBrayer, and that is the inning. We head to the fifth. Cougs three outs away from winning it. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Owensboro Health offers excellent care for your entire family. Close to home in Grayson County with locations in Litchfield, Big Clifty, and Caneyvale. Our primary care providers are experts in managing high blood pressure, diabetes, and other chronic conditions, so you can stay healthy and feel your best. Make an appointment today with one of our primary care providers at owensborohealth.org slash primary care. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. 
experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. Fourteen to zero, Grayson County leads Whitesville Trinity as we head to the fifth. Gage Napier trying to finish what he started today. Line scores for both of these teams for Whitesville Trinity: zero runs, zero hits, three errors. For Grayson County, fourteen runs, eight hits, and no errors. As we mentioned, the Cougs have been averaging about two errors per game during their stretch of losing five of their last six. They've given up nine point three runs per game. Both of those have been better today. And I mean, Gage Napier, he walked the first batter. Since that point, he's been perfect against the Raiders. We have a pinch hitter now coming in for Whitesville Trinity. It'll be number 16, Hernandez, to hit. First pitch to Hernandez. I don't know what it was. And there's a called strike on the second pitch. We'll have to see officially what it was. We were all trying to scramble to see who the pinch hitter was, and we missed the first pitch from Napier. Let's see if our home plate umpire Andy Thomason will let us know. He will not. And there's a swing and a miss. And it was a strike <laughs> because Hernandez is headed towards the dugout. Good morning, good afternoon, good night from Gage Napier. That's strikeout number six. For the sophomore, Napier, big old goose egg in that hit column. If he can get these next two, he'll be able to end it. First pitch to Howard, and that's not Howard either. That's another pinch hitter for the Raiders. Terry is hitting now for the Raiders. And he swings and misses. So it's one and one, and there is a swing and a miss. Actually, it was fouled off into the glove. Still ends the same, so it's one ball, two strikes, one down. Here in the top of the fifth inning, Grayson County looking to move to 9-7 and seven on the year. More importantly, 1-0 and oh in district play. I guess it wasn't a ball. That was strike three. I guess there was not a ball called early on. And another pinch hitter will come as it will be Birch to pinch hit. Ethan Maxey going deep into the box as we're one out away. Swing and a miss. Gage Napier is not allowed a hit so far in the game. He's mowed down each batter since the opening batter. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off, and the Raiders are down to their final strike. Long look in for Gage Napier. The 1 2 is again fouled off, just getting enough. Against Birch, the second baseman now. Ethan Maxey, who played his college baseball at Kentucky Wesleyan, making those changes. The 1 2 outside goes to the backstop. Haycraft couldn't catch up to it. So two balls, two strikes, two down. Top of the fifth inning, Grayson County leads 14-0 against the Raiders of Whitesville Trinity. The 2-2 two -two misses high and inside. Napier has retired 14 straight, looking to make it 15. The 3-2 is inside, and he walked him. Abbott is now hitting, so he moves from the, as the designated player, 
He's now hitting eighth, and he fouls off the first pitch. Ethan Maxey not making it uh, too easy on us scoring in the booth. 0-1 oh, outside. Four new batters in this fifth inning, but when you haven't had a hit yet, you got to do whatever you can. 1-1 one, one, here, two down, top of the fifth. Birch stands on, on first. Missing outside again. Napier, Napier had been very efficient throwing strikes. Second, third, and fourth inning. He dropped down just a little bit here in this fifth, including having his second walk of the game. Outside, three and one. Gage Napier trying to finish off the Raiders. The 3-1 is a called strike on the outside corner. We go here to a full count with two down. you got to imagine the runner, Birch, will be off and running. He is, and it's hit right side, down, base hit. The first hit of the game for Whitesville Trinity. They almost threw it. They end up throwing it away. Does Grayson County on the play? Is, wasn't running all the way. Was Abbott. Fulkerson came in hurrying, and they're going to say out of play. Now, and that's going to... Are they going to play to run on this? They will. Because it hits the dugout. So a little blooper puts Whitesville Trinity on the board. And that'll be an error on Fulkerson, the right fielder. There's a swinging strike now to Howard, who is now in to hit for the Raiders. And it hits him. The bases are now loaded. Or rather, you have runners on first and third. And there's a called strike. Grant Howard is the hitter. Defensive indifference allows the runner to advance now. Check swing just misses high. Napier struggling now here in this fifth inning after allowing the first hit. Swing and a miss. And the Raiders are down to their final strike. Strike three called. That's the ball game. Grayson County defeats Whitesville Trinity by a final score of 14 to 1. Gage Napier. Starts and finishes and also comes away with a couple of RBIs to push the Cougs to 9-7 and 1-0 and in 12th district play. We'll take a break, wrap it up after this. So again, your final score, Grayson County 14, Whitesville Trinity 1. This is Cougar Baseball on K105. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready kids can help. 
Get started at ready.gov slash kids. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Hi, I'm Peyton Manning, and I'm partnering with the American Red Cross this year to tackle blood shortages. Giving blood's important because every two seconds, someone actually needs blood, and unfortunately, only like 3% of the U.S. population donates. So we have to step up to give and to make sure there's plenty of blood available for those in need. Visit redcrossblood.org to get in the game and make an appointment to give. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join United, United Way. Way. Grayson County wins today by a final score of 14 to 1 against the Whitesville Trinity Raiders. Your final line score for the Raiders: one run on one hit and three errors. For Grayson County, 14 runs on eight hits and one error. Gage Napier he goes the distance, picks up the win. Five innings, one hit, one run. It was unearned. Two walks and eight strikeouts. The loss is saddled to Carson Fitzgerald. He goes two innings, six hits, nine runs, seven earned, two walks, two strikeouts. Hitting wise for Grayson County. Three RBIs for Gage Napier. He goes two for two with those three RBIs, including a triple. Levi Rogers and Jake Bradshaw each had a pair of runs batted in. Shirella, Bradley, and Bonnock finished off with one each as well. Cougars will turn their attention again towards this Whitesville Trinity team tomorrow there in Whitesville Community Park. Game time will be at 6 o'clock tomorrow there from Whitesville. Uh, and you can go to the K105 Sports Twitter. We'll be sure to have updates from that one as it goes along there from good old Whites Vegas, I know they like to call it. And uh, Cougars will look to sweep the season series against the Raiders and move to 2-0 and in district play. Important score update to bring you. In 12th district action, it is Edmondson County on top of Butler County 4-2 to two at the end of the fifth inning. That's baseball action happening. I'm not sure whether that one's in Morgantown or if it is in downtown Browntown tonight. Regardless, though, it is a two-run advantage for the Wildcats in that game. Again, your final score today, Grayson County 14, Whitesville Trinity 1 in five innings of play. Gage Napier goes the distance, strikes out eight, also having a game-high three RBIs. We'll be back on Thursday as the Lady Cougar softball team will take on Butler County over on the upper opposite side of campus. That'll be a 5.30 start time. So our coverage will begin about 5.15, 5.20 or so. They're from good old Grayson County High School. Uh, invite you to join us there. If not, you can come out and support the team in person. Looks like it's going to be pretty nice week weather-wise as well. So until then, that'll wrap up our coverage. I want to thank the K105 Digital Productions crew for their hard work. Your camera operator was Eli Smith, and your director was Trey Cook. So tonight, in fact, the final score here, right, right coming in, Edmondson County does defeat Butler County in that game 4-2. to two. That's a final so uh, looking at the district standings here, Edmondson County now 3-0 in district play, Grayson County 1-0. So until Thursday night for the K105 crew, Sam Gormley saying so long, everyone.